All right, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Again, thank you all so much for coming over now. I see a lot of comments with uh, Sister Christine when you guys say, fly high, songbird. I think that's that's just beautiful, man, beautiful. We're back on the Grunge channel, um, and they got a video here that says uh, a look back at her life and career. Um, it was a lot I didn't know about her. Um, you guys... When I went live, y'all told me a lot of things. I want to check this video out. Uh, you guys get to see if it's a lot of stuff in here that you didn't know. Because, you know, they do pretty good deep dives into, you know, the life and uh, accomplishments and family. So, going to check this out. Again, shout out to them. Make sure you guys are subscribed to their channel. They're great. Shout out to all the good humans, man. We ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. Christine McVie was charmed with a remarkable life and career, and all while she preferred to stay in the background. Still, that skyrocket to success also had its downsides. Born on July 12, 1943, Christine McVie, then Christine Perfect, was raised in a musical family. Her father was a concert violinist and music professor, and her grandfather was a professional organ player. Naturally, young Christine started piano lessons at an early age, though she wouldn't actively pursue music until much later. By contrast, her mother Beatrice was a psychic, medium, and faith healer. And as McVie told it, she was the real deal. She told Robin Egger in a 2004 interview for S Magazine that her mother healed a wart on her nose overnight. Did you guys know that? Somebody might have said something in the live. It's, it's so hard to read all the comments, but if you didn't know, now you know. Said they, she healed a wart overnight. Psychic, medium, and faith healer. And as McVie told it, she was the real deal. She told Robin Egger in a 2004 interview for S Magazine that her mother healed a wart on her nose overnight when she was 11, constantly received thank you calls from the sick people she had healed, and even joined a psychic research society. Sadly, Beatrice Perfect passed away at a relatively young age. Christine McVie rekindled her love for music soon after college. She joined a blues band called Chicken Shack in 1967, singing and playing the keyboards nightly. In a 2022 interview with The Guardian, she explained that she met bassist John McVie when Chicken Shack opened up for his band Fleetwood Mac. Though he was engaged to someone else at the time, the two fell in love, and he broke off the previous engagement and proposed to her. Christine and John McVie married in 1968 with guitarist Peter Green, a founding member of Fleetwood Mac, serving as their best man. As Christine explained to The Guardian, they had a most unconventional honeymoon, booking a local hotel in Birmingham so they could be close to her mother, who had fallen ill. By happenstance, legendary blues singer Joe Cocker made an appearance that night. McVie told The Guardian, He was staying at the same hotel and he got plastered with us on our wedding night until we kicked him out. <laughs> After performing alongside and marrying a member of Fleetwood Mac, Christine McVie was well acquainted with the band's music. In fact, she was quite a fan. As she explained in a 1984 interview with Rolling Stone, she was especially fascinated by the antics of then-guitarist Peter Green and then-vocalist Jeremy Spencer, and would watch them play whenever she had time off work. I'm just, it's still sticking with me, man, just thinking of Joe Cocker being just, just drunk and just coming there talking about some, what would you do if I got drunk in front of you? <laughs> oh, man, rest in peace to Joe. I know he's like, <laughs> oh, man. She was especially fascinated by the antics of then guitarist Peter Green and then vocalist Jeremy Spencer, and would watch them play whenever she had time off work. In 1970, Green unexpectedly left the band mid-tour following a negative experience with LSD that left him permanently altered. The remaining members were left heartbroken and desperate for a worthy replacement. Luckily, one was already on hand. McVie recalled to The Guardian in 2022, They came out of the rehearsal room and said, Hey Chris, do you want to join? I couldn't believe my luck. I said, are you serious? I'm just a girl who plays piano. She had just 10 days to rehearse with the band before her first show in New Orleans. 
The first Fleetwood Mac album to feature McVie as a full-fledged member was 1971's Future Games. Adding McVie to the lineup did change Fleetwood Mac's sound, namely because they replaced a guitarist with a keyboardist, but it only added to the band's commercial appeal. According to Christine McVie's 2014 interview with Rolling Stone, drummer and band leader Mick Fleetwood knew he wanted American guitarist and vocalist Lindsey Buckingham to join Fleetwood Mac after hearing Buckingham Nick's album. But Buckingham had one condition for joining Fleetwood Mac. He insisted on bringing his other half, his vocalist and girlfriend Stevie Nicks, along as well. Concerned that two women in the band could be problematic, Fleetwood asked McVie, See, I didn't know, none, I didn't know this how it went down at all that's what i be saying man these videos be so good wow how it how it all comes together man again i'm pretty sure a lot of you knew like hardcore fans but man just just hearing this makes it even th their their story even more special their half his vocalist and girlfriend stevie nicks along as well concerned that two women in the band could be problematic Fleetwood asked McVie to meet with Nix and essentially interview her. The meeting's terms were simple. If McVie didn't approve, Nix would not be permitted to join Fleetwood Mac. According to McVie in a 2021 radio interview with Johnny Walker, the legendary interview took place in a Mexican restaurant. McVie explained, It just so turned out that I really did like her. She had a great sense of humor and we got on really well. So I said, okay, my signature of approval. <laughs> Buckingham and Nix joined the band the very next day on December 31st, 1974 and the rest is history so that was uh, the start of all that christine mcvee's piano ballad songbird offers a tender moment on fleetwood mac's iconic 1977 album rumors and became a popular closing song at the band's live shows but its borderline supernatural creation process caused mcvee to describe the song to the guardian as a strange little baby in a 2015 interview with mojo magazine mcvee explained i had a little transistorized electric piano next to my bed and i woke up one night at about 3 30 a.m and started playing it I I had all words, melody, chords in about 30 minutes. It was like a gift for- Hey, as an as a artist, man, your brain, it never stops. It never stops. I know um, Brian McKnight, this, this was a long time ago. I don't know if he still does it, but in his room, it was, uh, uh, I was watching MTV Cribs. And at the foot of his bed, he has a, p a piano. And he, he's talking about having women over. He's like, he wake up and he'd look at them and he get inspired to write something. <laughs> so, that, you know, having that right next to you and your brain, you just got to get up and go like, oh, it, it's here. You know, that's, that's, yeah. Brain never stops. The Angels. Without a tape recorder to capture it, McVie furiously wrote the lyrics down and lay in bed unable to sleep for fear she would forget the song. The next morning, she rushed into the studio to record Songbird. The final version was recorded at the University of California's empty Zellerbach Auditorium in 1976, with McVie playing the piano alone to create the impression that she was performing after everyone had left the concert. Regarding the song's meaning, McVie told The Guardian in 2022 that it was sort of like a little prayer for everybody. By 1973, the McVie's marriage was strained by constant proximity due to sharing a band as well as John's alcoholism. The McVie's eventually called it quits mid-tour in 1975. According to Rolling Stone, the pair divorced in 1976 but remained amicable as bandmates. Christine then began dating the band's handsome lighting director, Curry Grant. In her book, Storms, My Life with Lindsay Buckingham and Fleetwood Mac, Lindsay Buckingham's then-girlfriend, Carol Ann Harris, claims that Grant was a notorious playboy who had focused his energy on Christine in the rumors era. Nonetheless, the two stayed together for three years, though it caused tension in the band. As Rolling Stone notes, Christine wrote the hit song, You Make Loving Fun, about Grant, though she told John it was about a dog to keep the drama to a minimum. I'm a romantic person, I like to write about love. Christine McVie eventually ended her relationship with Curry Grant and started a new relationship with Dennis Wilson, the drummer for the Beach Boys. Beach Boy. She told the BBC in 2017, He was a mess, but he was charismatic, charming, and really handsome. He swept me off my feet big time. McVie describes their romance as a very roller coaster affair. And in a 2004 interview with Robin Egger for S Magazine, she See, man, I... It I know it's extremely difficult to, to date when 
your you know of ce celebrity status because it's it's so much that goes on behind closed doors and and you know you got so many temptations just all that stuff man it is it, it's extremely hard you know finding some type of balance you know you're on tour they're on tour it, it it's tough it is tough man kudos to the ones that made it because it hey i know it is not easy boy I found him insane. Because of that, I found him very attractive. I found him funny, but he was barking mad. He was the ultimate case of opposites attracting, and McVie admitted to mothering Wilson. He would disappear for days at a time, only to return. Each time, McVie would take care of him and help him get sober. But then the cycle would repeat. According to The Guardian, Wilson developed serious addictions to cocaine and alcohol and was frequently homeless. He and McVie finally called it quits after years of tumultuous dating. The relationship had a bad end, and McVie did not stay in regular contact with him. Just four years later, in 1983, Wilson died when he went diving in frigid waters while heavily intoxicated and drowned. Christine McVie shocked the world in 1998 when she left Fleetwood Mac and essentially vanished. She ran away. She went back home. She's what doing, can you say? She's, she's doing, doing what she wants and yeah. she's really happy. In a 2014 interview with Rolling Stone, she explained that her fear of flying had become a panic-inducing phobia, which made touring difficult. She was also tired of the instability. She explained, I wasn't just burned out, but I was tired of traveling and living out of a suitcase. I'm quite a domestic person by nature, and the nomad thing had got a bit stale on me, really. McVie moved back to England and worked on restoring her new house. Eventually, she grew tired of the country, conquered her fear of flying through therapy, and returned to Fleetwood Mac 16 years later. The band embarked on several reunion tours in 2014 and 2015, but things kind of fell apart in 2018 when Lindsey Buckingham left the band. Amid discussions of a farewell tour, McVie was faced with a new touring challenge, aging. She told Rolling Stone in 2022, I don't feel physically up to it. I've got a chronic back problem which debilitates me. I stand up to play the piano, so I don't know if I could actually physically do it. The mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. While she took center stage for a few of her songs, like Songbird and Everywhere, Christine McVie predominantly stood near the back playing her keyboards, synths, and organs. In fact, according to a 1980 issue of Contemporary Keyboard, her setup at one point included so many instruments that she was nearly invisible on stage. Though she pared down her keyboard array over the years, the fact of the matter was she didn't mind being in the shadows. McVie later admitted in a 2021 radio interview with Johnny Walker that she had no desire to be a front person and instead preferred to be back with the rhythm section of the band. For her, the enjoyment came from jamming with drummer Mick Fleetwood, bassist John McVie, guitarist Lindsey Buckingham, and the many other musicians she played with over the years. She told Rolling Stone in 2022, I've never felt like a solo artist. I always like to be part of the group. Despite being married twice, Christine McVie never had children, though she would have liked to. McVie found that being a woman in music came with several alarming double standards. First, few partners understood or accepted the demands of her profession. McVie and Stevie Nicks were considered pioneers at the time. As in the 1970s and 80s, men dominated music, and women were still expected to tend to their husbands' needs at home. Second, the rigorous nature of touring and performing made birthing and raising a child nearly impossible. McVie told Robin Egger in a 2004 interview for S Magazine, Both Stevie and I, we were married to Fleetwood Mac. That's what we did, and it was a harsh marriage. There was no time for relationships of our own. Having given their 30s and 40s to the band, both Nix and McVie ultimately sacrificed their chances at motherhood. She told The Guardian in 2013, There were never any children for me. There was always a career in the way. It was a case of one or the other. And Stevie would say the same. The lads went off and had children, but for Stevie and I, it was a bit difficult to do that. While some of the band's more flamboyant songs, like Gypsy and Rhiannon, are attributed to iconic... See, I didn't even know that. I didn't know they didn't have any kids. Dang. And that's what I mean, like, you know, a lot of guys be out there being all willy-nilly, if you know what I mean. What they're talking about is, you know... Because you know how it is, the double standard... You know how women are looked at different if they're doing stuff like that, what the guys be doing. We all grown here. We all know what they, you know, what they talking about. But it's like, it's crazy, man, when you think of it, like, um, 
Because, you know, like, the legacy, you know what I mean? Like, just having your name, you know, it, dang. The lads went off and had children, but for Stevie and I, it was a bit difficult to do that. While some of the band's more flamboyant songs like Gypsy and Rhiannon are attributed to iconic frontwoman Stevie Nicks, most of Fleetwood Mac's sweet and catchy love tunes were written and performed by the mellow-voiced Christine McVie. In fact, she sang lead on more songs than Nicks or guitarist Lindsey Buckingham. A true artist and musician at heart, McVie was skilled at crafting the perfect lyrics and melodies to accompany her piano and keyboard arrangements. She told Robin Egger in a 2004 interview with S Magazine, I'm a pretty basic love songwriter. I've been told that I have a way of saying the obvious in a non-obvious way. Over the course of her career with Fleetwood Mac, McVie wrote or co-wrote 25 songs, eight of which ended up on the band's popular 1988 album Greatest Hits. A few of her most beloved songs include Don't Stop, You Make Loving Fun, Over My Head, Little Eyes, and Say You Love Me. Sadly, McVie died on November 30th, 2022 at age 79, but her brilliant musical offerings live on. Yeah, man. Rest in peace to the songbird. You know, I, I, I said in my live, I want to go back and listen to uh, Fleetwood Mac all over again just to hear her voice. Because, like, it's just, it's just crazy to think that they didn't have any kids, though, man. I mean, I know it's a lot of a lot of women actresses a, a lot that that make that decision, like they say, it's either or, and because they they it's more so like a this wouldn't be fair to the child because I, it would be hard for me to be, you know, one hundred percent committed to raising this child. You don't want it's like you would have someone else would be having to raise your child, and a lot of them don't want that, you know. You know, there's stories of there's a lot of kids that grow up on the road. It, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. But again, I wanted to check this video out because I wanted to know more about her. Um, but wow. The music lives on for sure, man. Again, don't know how many of you guys knew this. Um, don't know how many of you guys have seen this video. But I thank y'all for coming and watching again with me if you have. And shout out to the Grunge channel, man. Um, yeah. Peace out.